Man, what it do, world? <clears throat> it's your minds and them, the Toothless Wonder, reporting live. Well, technically, I ain't live. This is, will be pre recorded on the Bamboozle Getting <clears throat> News Network. You understand? Uh, I don't really know where I'm going to go with this. Just, just a lot of random thoughts just going through my head, random epiphanies that seemingly aren't connected. But in this life, everything is interconnected. You know, I'm just realizing. Well, not just realizing, <clears throat> but I had a conversation with a family member last night. And based on the subject matter of the conversation, it had to do with politics. Let's put it like that. I come to understand, again, to a greater degree that, and I said this in previous videos, that the black populace, because of what we endured here through the transatlantic slave trade, you know, Jim Crow era, slavery, civil rights era, being... Uh, <clears throat> integrated into into the burning house of society that we're suffering from battered wife syndrome where from my belief or understanding rather that you begin to identify well not now that's stockholm syndrome where you feel like you can't survive without the abusive spouse uh we were having a conversation which typically if you notice along the political lines Black people aren't who vote Democratic, right? And you can do whatever you want to do. It don't make me none. I just ain't doing it. Their, their defense of their particular candidate is knocking the next one. But no one says, oh, this is why I'm for this person because of X, Y, Z. I'm for this person because I don't like this person. That doesn't apply in real life. Like, if I'm choosing a mate between, you know... Of, of a selection of probable candidates. I don't choose one mate over the other because I dislike that one so much that I choose you by default. It's probably best if, if that's the re or the, the conclusion you're coming to that I'm going to choose this particular woman because this other woman uh, is so bad. I should probably choose none. You see what I'm saying? Um, in reference to, you know, my family member. Um, it was just like, I don't know, I was just astonished in, in, in the rhetoric. I was astonished at the, the, the insinuation of name calling or that I'm being duped. When I then point out, name, some t name a situation that has duped me. I ain't get no jab. You know what I'm saying? I didn't <clears throat> fall for Black Lives Matter. You see what I'm saying? All the stuff that you praised not saying that directly to her, but I'm thinking all the stuff that the people on TV tell you to rally behind, you rally behind and then get duped. And then when someone points it out to you, you start talking about something else, which means you'll get duped again and you'll be duped come November 4. Now, Grant, I ain't for either one. However, I do believe in this choosing the lesser of two evils in the sense of the other candidate will probably do something about immigration, would probably attempt to make the economy better. The same stuff everybody complain about now. The same stuff everybody complain about now <clears throat> is under the jurisdiction or the administration of the person that people are defending. Totally forgetting that we all know that she's lying about her her authentic or her her ethnicity, ethnicity, excuse me. But that doesn't matter. These people are like here's one. Now, we got all jiggy fly for George Floyd, but because the people on TV didn't tell you to get jiggy fly for um, the last lady that got uh, unalived by the police officer when she invoked the name of Yeshua, what happened? Social engineering is a hell of a drug. And I love this family member, no diggity, no doubt. However, moving forward, Especially like doing like, say, the jab time. If they put enough social pressure on people, <clears throat> they will start informing on those who. And that's kind of one of my concerns. That's why I kind of tread like, like, yeah, I love you. But eh, I don't know how much information I want to give you. Because I know if they put, un put you under enough social pressure, you'll fight to uphold a system that ain't benefited you none. That keeps imposing itself on you. It's no different to me than the crab in the bucket or. You know, when someone, you know, attempts to escape the plantation, 
the other slave who catches wind up will tell master get a couple extra pieces of cornbread and then not only that but feel like they're doing you a good justice you no no it's a no you shouldn't escape now nah, don't do that they actually believe they're helping you the subtlety of the mental health crisis here in babylon it it, it escapes me to find verbiage to accurately describe what i'm seeing and perceiving now again you can vote for who you want to vote for it make me none <clears throat> but because i don't want to do what you want me to do or i don't do what you do then somehow i'm an enemy when i ain't did nothing to you maybe my enemy is the person attempting to point out who my enemy is you see what i'm saying but the higher level of critical thought and free thinking seems to be i don't know if it's well it's probably with you know the social engineering you know how you know the the the, the poison in the food the poison in the air the poison in the water the constant indoctrination of the 24-hour news cycle like i have another family member all he does is regurgitate what he sees on msnbc so i'm like well you're no more informed than everybody else that does the same thing but if you choose to read independently research independent they'll say that's not valid but then it'll be valid if the same people say it's valid just like <clears throat> like you know i've you know had a long career of smoking herbals right and I told this said family member, I said, wow, don't you, I find that very uh, coincidental how you, you know, this particular family member never did drugs. So sometimes you can kind of look down on people who had that particular struggle, whatever. But I said, you know what I find odd? That as soon as the, the proverbial white man changed his stance on herbals for the sake of getting into it so he can sell it and make money from it. Now, all of a sudden you've changed your stance. It's a hard road, but it, I mean, I'm to the point of, granted, we grow and evolve. You come to greater levels of knowledge and understanding, right? But if anybody's able to sway your belief, oh, you know what I'm saying, oh, at the drop of a hat, your, your, your beliefs are circumstantial. You don't even believe what you believe. You just believe it because you think it's going to put you on the winning team. Now, understanding that the teams who play like the political WWE arena are all paid for by the same folk. You can point it out to them. They still don't care because their brain can't rewire itself or something. I forgot the clinical term or the psychological term in which it states um, a lot of times when you like the cognitive dissidence, like even if you show people evidence, concrete evidence, not speculation, conjecture concrete evidence that something is to the latter of what they they actually believe formally their brain will have a hard time processing <clears throat> but what's odd with that is even if the people on tv show them new evidence they buy hook line and sinker even though they have a track record of misleading people it's insane like i talked about in another video how i believe within the, the annals of the core the dna of the the american black person is a, is a is a trait that makes us susceptible to being bamboozled repeatedly over and over and over again and then defend the bamboozler like you defending the bamboozler is going to put you in a better position no it'll just get you let off a cliff my brain even when i was younger certain stuff i just inherently knew i got a story right i, was, I had the flu one time so this is now mind you because of how i grew up now this is mid 80s mid, mid late 80s right i'm in elementary school something to that effect but i kind of grew up old-fashioned so we still had the floor mount tv with only five channels four or five channels uh you know what i mean we still had the plastic on the couch right when, when a storm would come up everybody had to be quiet and stop talking i thought everybody did that so i had the flu so i had to stay home with my grandmother and my mother right so typically back then we i can't remember a time other than when I broke a bone that we went to the hospital. This is still back during the time where I lived at in the mid late eighties, the doctor came to your house and he was the doctor in your family for years. And he knew y'all personally. And sometimes he would just stop by the house to drink coffee and just chit chat. Right? So my mother called me and the way she called me, I should have known something was up. So I take all my little gusto and peel myself off the couch. Cause you know, when you sweat, you stick to the platter. <laughs> 
I get my little liners on. I go in the kitchen. I never forget this. I walk into the kitchen. I see my mother standing beside the wooden table. It's a glass of water, a white napkin with a white dot on it. I look at the uh, at the table. Look at my mom. Look back at the table. Look at my mom. Say, what's that? She says, a pill. It's going to make you feel better. I say, I don't want to feel better. I I'm going to get better on my own. And turned around and walked back and went back to the couch. Then she, you know, rah, rah, you know, you got to get, because you're going to school tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? They, and that's another thing. As soon as they hear you laugh, you're going to school. You ain't sick no more if they hear you laugh. But even back then, somehow I knew pills. You know what I'm saying? I never forget one time I was watching TV and I forgot what the story was. And I was blown away. Cause I'm like, yo, that man lying. And then I had to walk outside and contemplate because my brain couldn't imagine the fact that somebody on TV hopped on that joint and lied to the people. I thought, like, I was so pure and innocent and green. I thought everybody loved each other. The little stuff I seen on TV, because I had, an, uh, like, a very vivid imagination. I didn't think that was a depiction of the stuff that goes on in real life. I thought that was something somebody came up with their imagination. You know what I mean? But then after moving and so on and so forth, I come to discover the world, as I say, and I say, oh, my damn, I'm going to have me a hard life. Like the whole nine to five culture. Unless I actually liked working the job, I ain't, I ain't finna be there long. That ain't never been the case. I never got, you know, into politics. I didn't care. I was just indifferent, you know what I'm saying? And then I kind of question myself, I'm like, well, the, the people that seem to care about make these compelling arguments. But something inside of me just can't put my finger on. I just can't get with it. I just can't idol worship nobody. I might like a particular attribute or skill you have. But just to bow down and worship at your feet, I don't understand none of that. It don't make sense to my in, to my spirit. You know what I'm saying? Then when that typically happens, now you get labeled, you know, with some type of uh, uh, mental health disorder or whatever, whatever, right? So now they say you're crazy. Even though when you apply yourself, you get straight A. You know what I'm saying? This is back during the time. I don't know how it is now. As far as my family want to tell, and we had these elder board members of your family that would prophesy over you, even though they themselves might might not be too far removed from sharecropping, and uh, they ain't really got no education, but somehow they don't get duped, and somehow they own all their own stuff, even if they uh, what they call cash poor. You know what I'm saying? They kept their family together. They got through stuff. Granted, it might have been a different time and culture, but. You know, back then, these, these people prophesy over you. Certain stuff they told me when I was, let's say, 10, 11. I'm starting to see the glimpses of it now at 42. They say the longer y'all make you wait, the bigger it is. In reference to that, right? And I was just talking to my partner, Blue Hundo, right? About just the path, the journey, and how, you, how I've gotten things done. It just never comes through the vehicle that I think. So... My vast majority of my skill set or life experience as of recent has to do with substance abuse, addiction, and everything tied into that from a real game perspective. Yeah, you can get sober, but you can get sober and still go to jail. You can get sober and still get duped. You see what I'm saying? You can get sober and still make bad decisions. You can be sober and still be law. You're just putting yourself on some footing to then continue to grow, evolve, learn. But getting sober just ain't the end-all, be-all. And you can't just do that if you that's what you choose to do. But you'll probably still have the same con uh, outcomes of someone using. Because typically you just stop using, you'll go to sex or you'll go to making money or, or, you know, a lack of humility and so on and so forth. That's why I really don't fool with that realm because they replace one drug with another. You know what I'm saying? Ego, which I find to be odd. I'm like, you do all this dirt. You're, you're a douchebag of a human being, but somehow your chest poked up. How? Because I don't, I don't particularly understand. It. But it looks like I'm being funneled by the Most High back into the very same uh, area of, of, of expertise or industry that has caused me the most vexation. The things that have caused the most vexation have actually been the catalyst to do the things I'm attempting to do. You see what I'm saying? In reference to certain things among my family, I've gotten that rectified. Because they started stressing me out that it forced me to deal with it. Now, I'll try to work with you, or I might put it on a back burner as far as a priority list. But the way I'm kind of set up, once something becomes a, a show enough issue, then it trumps everything else. And then I construct everything else around that. So I've gotten that done. I've gotten certain, you know, financial things done by being put in a financially 
pressure cooker situation where I had no choice but to deal with it or to put all my effort and energy into such. And then the effort and energy I put into such wasn't really the callus for the victory. It was the fact I was willing to step on the battlefield and the most high had already won the battle for me. I just had to show up there to get the W. Message, you know what I'm saying? I ain't really got no real long one. Just sitting here, man, it's a little sunny right here, over here in the first state of Delaware, you know what I'm saying? Take me a small little trip. Mm, got stuff on my eyeball. Why y'all ain't telling me? It's like, nah. But uh, on that note, man, I'm going to holler at y'all. Stay up out y'all. Keep the faith. Keep going. Call a play. It'll work out for you. Ooh, ah!